everyone. <laughs> Callan here with my buddy Jesse. Doing the uh, first walk and talk with two people. <laughs> so so anyways, we, uh, we've we been wanting to actually chat together for a while on camera. And uh, our lives are a little bit busy. Things happen. Finally doing it. And we've been wanting to talk about how, you know, I think we're all aware that things are pretty funky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Out there in the world right now. And uh, now, you know, I, I do talk about that stuff in my videos and I, Jesse probably talks all about it a little bit, but in this podcast, we want to talk about what are kind of sort of main solutions to this thing. So, I mean, my perspective, and maybe, I don't know how you see it, but I mean, I see it as there are people who have a long-term plan for humanity and it's not necessarily what most of us would want. <laughs> to say the least. So, but the reason why we're in a position of like, they're probably gonna succeed unless people, you know, do something is because we're all dependent on a system which they control. And we, if we were all to jump out of that system, the banking system, for example, mm -hmm. we would probably die, most of us. The food system or the, right. yeah. Right, so that's kind of what, we were thinking about focusing on today. Also, I did an interview about veganism recently with someone else, and I mentioned Jesse, who only eats drinks. He doesn't even eat mm -hmm. a vegan diet one hour a day. And, you know, I see that as like, you know, you're, you, that's like a road to breatharianism. Like we have a friend, Ella Tom Elamine, who's a breatharian who's even far beyond that, right? So that is one way which we can become independent. So I want to talk to Jesse about First of all, what exactly are you doing? And, and then if someone's interested in getting to where you are, how do they get there? Okay, yeah, so uh, the whole thing with breatharianism is it's an ancient esoteric practice. It's essentially biohacking. I don't even, I wouldn't even call it that actually. I feel like this is actually a more natural way to live for all of us. It's, you know, just coming through now uh, from the field of like biohacking and just uh, the various uh, you know researchers who are getting into the benefits of fasting, the benefits of meditation, the benefits of qigong, the benefits of certain herbs and foods and things and practices, uh, you know, like seminal retention, big uh, one, and uh, you know mindset. Uh, so. And I feel like there's essentially six arms of this thing, but, um, you know, there's, there's uh, diet and fasting, there's uh, exer uh, energy cultivation, which comes in the form of, like, sun gazing, grounding, meditation, exercise, there's the sexual temperance thing, mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, I'm trying to think of all my various arms. But those are the those are the core practices, at any rate, and it's just like all things. The longer you practice, the more these things come naturally to you. We are energy beings, um, and so uh, what they're coming around to now through quantum biology is this understanding that we actually get more energy from the breath, from uh, having uh, structured exclusion zone water in our body. Mm -hmm. Um, and we actually, I've been studying this right now, like we use almost all of our oxygen in a process which combines it with hydrogen to turn it back into water. And actually I was finding out this morning, there is a process where we do the opposite. So water is actually a fuel source. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about, you know, like the whole hydrogen fuels, you know, thing, and yeah. that there's just tons of energy in water and your body is mostly water, there's water in the atmosphere. You know, uh, and this thing of like hydrogen, you know, like 70% or more of the planet is water. You know, there's also that's the dominant uh, uh, element in the universe is hydrogen. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's just this whole thing, you know, of your body battery uh, acidity versus alkalinity and getting the charge right, you know, and the whole thing, the mental aspect is one of the arms because, you know, that connects with like your relationships, your work. If there's all these things that drain your energy because you're not really 
in your joy, you're not doing your, you know, you're not fulfilling your creative expression, mm -hmm. then these things start to drag you down, right? I mean, everybody's had that experience of, like, a relationship that kind of pulls your energy, or a job, or, a, you know, or you not doing what you love, you know? So it sounds like it's basically holistic health, but taken far beyond what most people think is a limit. Yes, and the byproduct of, you know, it's not, not the, the goal, you know, it's, but the byproduct is that you can le learn to live off way less food or no food at all. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing, personally, uh, living off liquids only for about five years or so. Um, really and long, I guess. Yeah, it's been five years and I've been doing the last year doing this dry fasting. 23 hours a day and then juicing for an hour. So that means you don't eat anything or drink anything, not even water. Yeah. Except for one hour a day. Yeah, and then I, I kind of have like a liquid feast. And part of this is like, you know, satiating my emotional body. You know, I'm still a, in my householder years. I have kids, I have a job. You know, I work in, you know, physically in gardens, you know, creating food for us for people. And, um, you know, so, there'll be a time when I'm able to relinquish some of these things that are my responsibilities that I choose, you know, and where I'll be able to put more of my energy into just practice and maintaining this state of equilibrium. Every cell in your body wants this state of equilibrium. And so that's what we're trying to do is just create this state of like supreme homeostasis mm -hmm. and, uh, and energy and joy. So, so a lot of people probably think it would, it's kind of what we're saying is crazy here because, you know, we're basically told that if you don't drink water for three days, yeah, or if you don't eat for a couple of weeks, maybe, I think people are more reasonable about that. You know, it's more like a month or two months or something like that, yeah. but you're basically dead. Right. But like, I know there's a guy on YouTube now uh -huh. and he's done multiple dry fasts that were 20 days long. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, I know quite a few people in my digital community who've done well. I've done a four-day dry fast myself. I kind of like this part of this thing of like, you have to get your mind around the possibility, you know, the potential of this for it to become. We're all starting to learn now that mind creates reality, that this is a mental universe. And that even the words we say, for instance, change your biochemistry and your gene expression. So, um, you know, I basically had that limitation in my mind of like three days, no food or water, you're dead. So I did four days and I was like, hey, I'm not dead. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can hear it from people and, you know, that makes you more open to trying it yeah. and more likely you're going to succeed. But then when you start actually doing it yourself and you like go past, and I haven't done this, but you go past the three day mark where you're supposed to be dead and you're just like, wait a second, I'm still here. <laughs> And my friend Ellie Tom, my teacher, and our friend Ellie Tom, he came out and taught with me, you know, did a class on breatharianism, a retreat here in the desert. And he was with us for a couple weeks. And he didn't eat or drink one sip. We hiked all over the desert. He talked. He's energetic, playful. I've been with him on other retreats too. And the man, uh, as I understand it, you know, he'll occasionally, like, he was explaining to us when he went to, I forget which country, but they had this special water. It's called Zam Zam water from this special sacred spring, you know. And he had some of that, or, uh -huh. you know. It's part of this path of like, you want to still experience life. You're not just, but it's food freedom, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a state of health and longevity that I'm seeking. That's what, you know, I want to have a good life, a long life, and a healthy life. You know, and this whole thing of our culture's preoccupation with cons uh, with consuming things. We're taught that we're consumers, but we're actually creators. We create things. We create buildings and businesses and podcasts and, you know, uh, families and gardens and art. And, you know, it's getting more into that mode of understanding that you're a creator. And that's, you know, I think a bit of a sort of jumping off point too for our discussion with respect to this plan that's put forward uh, you know by the social architects 
that they would like to see happen. They're using their creative, you know, potential. Mm -hmm. We have the same potential every bit as much. And then they, they're working together because they understand that if a group of people get together with the same goal and work together diligently at it year after year after year, it will yeah. manifest. There's way more of us. We have way more potential to manifest than they do. Yeah. But, you know, if we're not working together on this, then that's not going to happen. So we got it. You know, there's all this division that's happening in the world, and that's part of their plan to get us, you know, going black versus white or the whole thing with sexual orientation or vegan versus you know carnivore or you know whatever let's be humans let's embrace love let's embrace our creative potential and create a new reality we, we i think this is actually a heaven realm but it's a realm in which we have total creative you know agency yeah i mean someone was mentioning to me the other day you know if we just planted fruit trees everywhere which we could easily do yeah 10 years later and then we're not gonna be worried about anything you know who can control you when you have everything you need you know i live outside i don't need to pay rent right so that's a big fear that a lot of people have yeah. is what i need to be able to have a place to live or i'm going to be on the streets and i'll be dead i've been living outside almost two years now and it's i don't even want to go back <laughs> i'm actually you know kind of envious of you even though you're you know on our land and you know we're we have a house you know it's like there's this there's many health benefits to yeah. this alternative lifestyle too and there's a great potential now there's everybody sees like the political tension the so you know social tension the economic tension the environmental tension i think that all can be solved in the garden you know and that we could all if you look back to after world war ii we had the whole uh you know thing of the uh, victory gardens mm -hmm. and during that time uh americans got 60 percent or more of their nutritional needs from within their community or their own gardens um and there was a vast majority of people were gardening now it's less than one percent and so this is like part of how they get us right is they get your sick your base chakra your sacral chakra how are you going to survive how are you going to procreate how are you going to create you know and for us to be able to move into these higher chakras of our heart and our crown, we're going to have to create that sort of stability and resilience by learning these things about our body, about our consciousness, and about how we can live on the planet. Bioremediate the planet, create food, and, you know, our economic well-being is very well tied to the ecological well-being. Mm -hmm. That You know, that's... That's where we get it, our abundance from, you yeah. know. So you, you're, you've been doing permaculture, which is a form of gardening for, I don't know, 22 years. All right, so you have your own garden, or you teach classes, and you, you also basically do it, build permaculture gardens for other people. Mm -hmm. So basically, for people who don't know what permaculture is, you want to define it for them? Sure, I mean, it's right there in the word. It's a permanent culture, right? And, you know, it also involves that word agriculture, you know, uh, but it's not just the buzzword of sustainability. This is something that was uh, designed by a man named Bill Moles. And there are a couple of people who are doing it uh, simultaneously. There is, I think, David Holmgren. And then, you know, people like Masa Noble Fukuoka were coming about it at the same time in different place. Is that the chop and drop guy? Yeah, he's the one straw revolution yeah. uh, and, uh, and basically it's uh, taking the uh, amazing brilliance of indigenous people across the world and their agricultural systems and combining them all into one design system where essentially one of the main focuses is agroforestry or food forestry where you can grow eight acres of food on one acre because you're layering up like a forest with perennial foods you know so you don't it's a no-till agricultural system you know i don't really buy the whole thing about the you know carbon being a problem because it's a carbon-based planet but we are desertifying the planet through our agricultural system of tillage and planting monocultures and using chemical farming and glyphosate and all these things so it's a natural ag agriculture 
where you grow your soil through, you know, using mineral accumulators, uh, nitrogen fixers, chop and drop, which is where you're just cutting your plants and laying them down, bringing in animal manures and things like that to nourish the soil. And Working with bacteria and fungus and stuff. Yeah, like we, we, we uh, culture various, you know, uh, um, bacteria and fungus through things like Korean natural farming and um, where you're gathering indigenous microorganisms and growing the populations out and then spreading them on your land. And that it's kind of an interesting corollary kind of to the conversation we're having here because in the soil you have pathogenic bacteria and you have beneficial bacteria and you have neutral bacteria. And if there's a the dominance of pathogenic bacteria, the neutral bacteria, we're trained to that. Mm. And if there's a dominance of beneficial bacteria, the neutral bacteria will be trained to that. It's so, just like in your gut and in, on your skin. Yep. And that could be also corollary, you know, if you're developing good soil and developing good pro, you know, biotic, to have also beneficial thoughts and become like a beneficial organism, you know, as, a, as above, so below kind of microcosm of the planet. Mm -hmm. We could be going around actually helping one another, helping the land, and then training more people to move to that instead of sort of this like cancerous form of lifestyle where we're just eating, you know, and consuming and putting down poison mm -hmm. and destroying, you know, this sort of that pathogenic uh, style. So, anyways, that's a whole. Well, tangent, like, where could we go with this? Like, if everyone's like, hey, let's build a garden, and I don't mean just like a garden within your fence line. I mean, like, everywhere you go, or, you know, yeah. a lot of places. It's just like, oh, there's food here. That's, that's what I imagine. I mean, there are some very, uh, you know, um, great examples that will, you know, kind of make your heart at ease to of massive permaculture projects that are going on around the planet in China, in India, in Africa, where local people are employing these techniques and starting to grow back the deserts into forests and it's helping their livelihood and their health and the health of their families and stuff. But I really, that's why I love making gardens for people in the urban landscape because I really do think, actually, if, you, if we each one of us garden everything within our fence and then beyond, you know, so we had food forest parks and parking lots and apiaries on rooftops and living walls on our buildings that are like, you know, uh, bioremediating non-point source pollutants that are cleaning the air, that are creating food, you know, rainwater harvesting systems for people to have access to clean water, clean food. We're the only beings that pay to live on the planet. Mm -hmm. Every other being on the and we're supposed to be the smartest. <laughs> All the other beings live here and live naturally and are free. Like, I think we are the smartest, but we got tricked. Yeah. And like, for example, like we think we need to have a, we need to have a house, right? For, but you built a cob house out of mud, uh -huh. sand, and straw. Yes. Which will probably last longer than your actual house. It will. It certainly will. And there's examples of these buildings all over the world you know and you know just like a swallow builds its house out of mud i think that's a really natural medium medium for human beings to build wood stone mud you know and that's what people did for millennia so that's essentially what permaculture is it's just it's nothing new it's actually everything everybody used to do mm -hmm. you know and there's great examples you know that the Amazon rainforest, for instance, there's a research paper put out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's getting too muddy. <laughs> it's real muddy. Yeah. Um, but the Amazon rainforest was um, created by indigenous people, as well as massive forests throughout northern Europe. Um, just, you know, just doing what people do. It's this thing is, if you insert yourself in, there's this misnomer about environmentalists of, you know, uh, leave only footprints kind of a thing you know mm -hmm. but if we actually put ourselves into the environment we serve to 
as in an ecological niche to benefit them. Though. So you go eat some berries, you poop them out, plant the seeds, they fertilizes grow. them. Yep. You know, you uh, if you're clearing, you know, wood out of the lower limbs of the forest, that makes it so there's not laddering uh, firewood that will create crowning fires, and it will create it produce greater airflow through the forest. There's so many things that our natural activity. <clears throat> will actually benefit yeah this is like steep <laughs> steep <wall>. mud <laughs> um, our natural activity can can benefit life you know and we got to get rid of this idea that we're bad for the earth it's just our way that's bad for the earth right and this it, and we we didn't do this right yeah I mean, we in a way we're going along with it but you know it's, it was kind of a s slow trick because they trick these parents, right? Your parents teach you to think that way, and then they, they brainwash you more. You teach your kids, and they keep doing it every generation. So, I mean, we are a sum of our habits. Yeah, and I think the really important thing what you said is, like, we feel almost the self disgust, mm -hmm. but that's not even necessary if you understand our true nature. Yeah, we're actually, you know, I like to liken it to the whole uh, idea of like the cosmic butterfly. You know, that if you look at a caterpillar that goes through the garden, eating everything up, destroying everything as it goes, then it goes into its chrysalis and it transforms and biologically becomes a completely different organism. And then it goes through the garden, pollinating, creating nothing but benefit. Mm -hmm. And I think we're kind of in a chrysalis right now. You know, that, that, meat, that caterpillar digests itself and is screaming as it's like... Um, becoming this new new form you know and so i think that's a lot of the pain and the war and the things that we're dealing with now is we we forgot our connection to ourselves to the earth and to one another and it's time to regrow that sense of connection and uh sovereignty and you know you know our creative power because we can have whatever fun we want here. We can manifest whatever we want. We just have to focus on it and take action steps like the social architects are doing. Mm -hmm. Just in a different way, you know. The, the, the world is our oyster. We don't have to be... We're involved in this world with those others who are planning these things, but we don't have to participate in that. We can create something else. And the more of us that do... It's like, you know, if you, you make a fire... And if you spread it out, you, you know, you'll notice that all the logs will put themselves out. But if you put them back together, they'll flare up and blaze up, mm. right? So the more of us that can, I can rub, rub on to, with this guy here, <laughs> and he can rub on to me, and we can, like, build this fire, this flame of inspiration. And, you know, we need that determination. We need that inspiration to make this change. Because most people see what's happening in the news and everything else, and they're like, oh, fuck. You know, it's all going down the pot. Yeah. I, think, I think that point about almost osmosis, you know, the people that you choose to be around, they influence you in a big way, right? I'm at the point where I'm basically eating one meal a day in an hour window, and I honestly don't think I would be here if I weren't just on the farm. It's not like we're constantly talking about it, or, I mean, we do talk about it occasionally, but it's not like he's teaching me while I'm here. It's just, I'm here. I think it's really cool that he's doing that. I see proof that he's doing it. I'm like, I can do that. Yeah, right? and, that, and that's what it takes, is just seeing someone else doing it, you know, can make that flip in the mind, you know, that, oh, it's, you know, they, they did this. There's a great book by Greg Braden called, uh, um, I think it's called The Biology of Belief. Yeah, I think that's right. And no, no, that's, uh, that's, that's the other Bruce guy. Yeah. yeah. What is it? I forget. But he goes he goes into this whole thing of like, every time someone uh, breaks a record in racing, for instance, mm -hmm. next year, someone breaks that record. Next year, someone breaks that record. Like, all our limitations are, are completely mental. You know, we actually have no limitations. We could probably fly then. I, I, that's, so I'm into this whole thing with breatharianism and I've been studying, you know, uh, the Vedic literature, you know, from, you know, because I'm herbalist too, I've been studying Ayurveda and, and Chinese, you know, the Taoists and what in the Vedic understanding is that we have various city powers, 
That's S I D P H A. <laughs> not city. Not city. <laughs> and every human being is endowed with these, but you have to, like all things, you have to develop them. You, you know, someone who goes and works out at the gym has big muscles because they go work out at the gym. Right. You know. If we had a real education, I think we would all have these abilities, right? Yep. Psychic, you know, uh, not needing food or water, ability to fly, ability to bilocate move through walls, things like that. Yeah, this is stuff, I mean, for example, what's it called when you go out of your body and you see remote viewing? Yeah. Like, this is something the government's doing since like the mid-1900s. They, they, they've put good money into tr learning how to train, and they could take anyone off the street and train them to remote view. And it's just a matter of practices. So it's the same thing with breatharianism, same thing with permaculture. You know, we can do these things. We just got to practice it. And that was a huge dawning for me because I had grown up in a household of scientists and environmentalists and this whole thought of, you know, human beings being bad for the earth. You know, when I got into permaculture, I learned, I could see directly the activity I was doing was making the earth thrive, you know. And I see that with breatharianism too. These practices of fasting, you know, proper nutrition, you know, herbs, you know, sexual temperance, all these things, you practice them and you you feel it ennobling you. You feel your your consciousness becoming more clear. You feel uh, stronger and healthy. I feel stronger and healthier at 46 than I did when I was 20, you know, for instance. And yeah, I feel way better than I did in my 20s. And I think, you know, you were just sharing with me this thing of Dr. David Sinclair, who's this longevity researcher in, in Harvard, and he's talking about your chronological age versus your biological age. Right. They have ways to measure this now, and it has to do, uh, you know, with, uh, what is it, telomeres and sirtuins. Yeah, basically, and yeah. Genetic that. damage, essentially. You have cells in your body which get messed up genetically, and they don't get cleaned up, and they act, they act like the wrong cell. Like your liver cell will have an eyeball cell, and or a cancer cell, you know, and that's know. what's killing you. I don't know if you've ever seen that with these crazy parasites that people can sometimes throw in their body and it's like a head with like teeth and oh my like gosh. eyes and stuff like that. I've heard of cancer cells growing teeth in here, but parasites. Yeah, I have to, I have to, uh, that's it's a certain kind of tumor that's like a parasite and tumor thing. Oh yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I've heard that parasites are a big cause of Parasi cancer. Parasite, you know, that whole thing, all disease, in my view, has to do with you know, it's inflammation, right? So it's acidity in the body, you know? So if you're eating acidic foods, you know, and which is gonna be like your sugar and your bread and tons of meat, you know, and like, I'm okay with everybody eating meat, but like, you gotta understand that that's acid. And the shallow side of acid burns more than the deep end of alkalinity, you know? Um, so, are, you know, and this overconsumption thing, you eat and eat, and it fills up, you know, everything goes in your blood has to be cleansed through your lymphatic system. Two thirds of your interstitial water is lymph, and only one third is blood. So, you, uh, it's basically like the septic system of your body, and it gets plugged up through this overaccumulation of mucus and, you know, just pus and junk and toxins, you know due to this eating of toxic food and, you know, uh, acidic, inflammatory food. So the, the way to clean it up is alkalize, hydrate, and fast, you know. That your natural state, the natural state of every cell in creation is, it's seeking vitality and to thrive and seeking homeostasis. And so it's like, what are you doing to the cell, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so on the... The osmosis thing, just being around the right type of people, but also with those people, building together, right? Setting goals together. Yeah. And I, like what, for example, you you mentioned, so you teach permaculture classes and I came to one yeah. last year or two years ago. I think it was both. Okay. Yeah. So perma basically it's like a week long class where they basically teach you everything and you get like a certificate and I don't, and there's all kinds of things. Like it's a, pr it's yeah. a pretty interesting program, but at the moment, it's like, well, you could probably reach a lot more people. Mm -hmm. And also, it may be more convenient for people online. if that education is happening online. So we're going to be collaborating. Like, he's the expert, and Hana, his wife, is the expert. 
they'll be teaching the class and basically I'm going to be helping them with the technical side of things. So we haven't figured out how that's all going to work, uh -huh. but uh, like what do, you, what do you have in mind at the moment? Um, so at each permaculture design class, we're going to go through the design uh, principles and, and the science around design. We're going to be doing hands-on practices to get involved with it. We do uh, a foraging section where we actually go out into the forest and I mean there's there's food all around us right now a lot of it is kind of sleeping but actually there's stuff we could make with you know like we could have some of those juniper berries over there mm -hmm. or we could make some pine needle tea out of the pinon or make some bark bacon out of them or, or like we had a wound put some of the sap on it yeah so we'll go into to things about that as well as herbal medicine making we'll you know be covering the whole thing of how to treat your soil, how to, you know, uh, get your water, how to, you know, develop these food forest systems. Um, we also go into a little bit about, you know, things like beekeeping and Korean natural farming, how to, you know, uh, produce, the, uh, proliferate these indigenous organisms. It's, I try to make it a comprehensive, like as if you were living this lifestyle and with hands-on learning going on the whole time because it's one thing to hear about it and like study it but it's another thing to do it we'll also be doing cob building no we'll probably be working on the next one right yeah yeah the one that you're welcome to stay in oh, by the nice. way uh, <laughs> which is going to be this cool little uh, palette palatable cob system that this this man devised i forget his name but he's awesome And but promote these people. Basically, the structure of the, it's almost free, it's free, right? You can just pick up pallets pretty much anywhere. Well, not anywhere, but you know, you can find pallets for free and that drastically reduces the amount of material that you need. Like your current one took you over a year to build. Yeah. But it'll probably take us a few weeks maybe. Yeah, this, this will be much quicker system. It's actually going to perform better than the cob because it has this insulative value from, we pack the uh, pallets with straw and then we use cob up around the outside so it has thermal mass but it also has insulation um, and that'll make the walls go up quickly um, so and we're gonna be making like a mud oven and, you know so we doing some bow drill fire making and you know various practices just to you know kind of entrain as a natural human being um, this year we're actually going to do it over the course of like uh, five or six weeks mm -hmm. on the weekends you know, like both days. Yeah, because it's hard for people to take you know ten days off yeah. and just like be devoted to the lifestyle all all day every day. And we'll make you know wild food and food from the farm, you know, so that you also get that practice of not just like growing it, but then what are you going to do with it? You know, and fermentation, drying food, how to store and prepare. Like we have in our root cellar, and Callan's been helping stock this thing. Like I've got all kinds of dried herbs and dried mushrooms and almonds and frozen peaches and apricots and you know pears and we've got big bins full of beans that we've you know been buying up and storing up and which we could even up. plant if we, we, yeah. we don't have to just be food we have right now at our house probably you know a good three months or more worth of food available not to mention we've got more food. i think we <laughs> do not to mention everything that's going to be growing as the right, season exactly. comes on and the things that we could forage yeah, we could go a year I think. I think we could and or more especially with uh, yeah, we keep our grow, practices keep growing stuff we could do it indefinitely yeah and so it's this thing of like getting real about how we're going to live on the earth and how we can create not just abundance for ourselves but then actually be able to share that because that's going to create greater also greater security you know, you're fearing someone stealing your stores. That's going to be the one of the best ways to stop it from happening is actually give them something. Yeah. You know, and make them feel secure. Right, because that's going to be a good, healthy community. And the opposite, if everyone's hoarding, I mean, if you have to hoard, then you got to hoard. But if you're able to get so much surplus that no one really needs to go around raiding anyone, right? That's way more ideal. That's going to create more security. And we can, through these systems, grow more food than we need. You know, the, there's abundance. Oh, this is the universe is an abundance-creating machine, you know. 
Um, so it's just about tapping into these sources of wild foods, this you know system of growing things, understanding your body better because we really don't need that much, you know. And so all these things you put them all together, and you get to a place where human beings are, I think, what we're more naturally like, which is loving, you know, community oriented, and creative, you know, um, people living in unity. I think everyone craves that, right? I know I do. Yeah, I think yeah. everyone does. And so that's what we can live and move toward. You know, we just got to like see it as a reality and take action steps. So if like we're still thinking about how we're going to do it technically and how many people would be able to join and all that type of stuff, there may be quite a few. Infinite, I guess. I well. <laughs> we'll see about infinite <laughs> but yeah. but anyways if someone because we can't like well, there's no website or anything to go to right now it's just yeah. kind of a thing in, in their heads but if someone wants to be like hey you know i want to i, I want to not i want to make sure i'm in on this right so yeah. is there a way they can t contact you yes uh you can uh go to our website www I don't know why I say that, everybody. <laughs> everybody knows the WW part. Uh, it's like Zia, a 90s thing. <laughs> Zia, yeah, I'm a 90s kid. So, ziapermaculture.com. Z-I-A. Yes, permaculture.com. Uh, and there you can sign up for our email list, and you can take a look at our events and our classes. Um, and you can also reach out to me via email. It's on the website, but also my email is Zia Energetics. Z-I-A Energetics all run together LLC at gmail.com Cool Well I think that's a good place to wrap up So that's how you find him He's on YouTube He's on Odyssey For if you're watching Because this video is probably going to go on his channel too I'm Cal and you can find me at Callen.org C-A-H-L-E-N.org So anyways thanks for the talk Jesse that was my, pretty awesome My pleasure brother Thank you for having me Yeah, yeah. Alright peace out Cheers everyone Be well Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, head on over to moderndaywizards.org. And if you're wondering, how can you be a wizard? Well, all you got to do is seek truth and share it.